up, so I'm asking for help. It's time to switch it up, put the hip shit on the shelf. Cause the way the real weapons be is real to sell. My I haven't seen the glory of the coming of the left. I can't do it by myself, so I'm asking for help. Cortez, the one and only financial health mentor to the black community, everybody's favorite, Father Penor, where I do my absolute best to bring practical yet proven wealth building strategies to working men and women all over this great nation of ours. Truly an honor and privilege and a blessing to come to you live and direct from the Black Wealth Movement Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, where we are looking to build wealth for each and every person uh, in this country, starting with the black community. Obviously, my fan base is uh, uh, in the black community, being a black man, I want to help as many uh, people um, as I can in our community so we can rebuild them uh, and really take 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 ownership of of our situation, man. We, we, we have what it takes to rebuild. We don't need government assistance. We don't need a whole bunch of um, handouts. We have everything that we need within our own control. So let's do what we can uh, to make the changes. Uh, that we can absolutely make in our community. Uh, so the Black Wealth Movement does that by helping you uh, understand how capitalism works in America. Put you in your own business, right? In America, if you don't have a business, you're like a foreigner in your own country. So you get your own financial education business. Uh, we will teach you how to minimize your taxes, take the tax savings, eliminate debt. Uh, and then once you have your debt eliminated, then you're off to the races to start building and investing and growing a long-term uh, investment portfolio. Um, and, and that's the name of the game, man. So if you're interested in anything like that, go to uh, moreinfo.joincortezenow.com or you can text Black Wealth Movement to 314-874-6887. Vernell, I did forget about you, but I just wrote your name down so I can go back into the stream and make sure I inbox you uh, that information today for the credit repair system. So I do apologize. Do me a huge favor. If you're checking this out on YouTube, go ahead and hit the share button. Uh, and also subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed and make sure that you rate the show thumbs up thumbs down Don't make no never mind. Just make sure that you rate the show and uh, also on YouTube You guys can type in the chat uh, where you're from and the name of the brand that you're building uh, And I want to help you guys all the same. I do see your chat um, sure Live you as well and, uh, also on YouTube, you guys Let me make sure I turn my monitor down all right, and then you guys on Facebook, do the same thing, man. Let me know where you're from. Let me know the name of your brand. Uh, let me see who do we have in here so far. We knew, I know I've got Logics in. I know I've got uh, our Future Leaders LLC is in the building. Uh, let's see, I got Mo Money LLC is in the building. Uh, Financial War Room is in the building. Uh, and Beats by the Boy is in the building as well. Let me know who you are on Facebook, uh, YouTube. Uh, and let me give you a free business shout out. So you guys know what today is. Today is free business coaching Fridays. And the name of the game is uh, for you guys to ask your questions, whether it relates to financial matters, uh, whether it relates to uh, business matters, whether it's branding, whether it's marketing, uh, social media, whatever you think I can help you with. Now, I do a lot in, in a few very uh, few different businesses uh, in terms of growing them from scratch. Uh, so I can probably help you go to the next level in your business, but I can't help you unless I know what you need help with. Today's show is also brought to you by Financial Health Insurance. If you do not have life insurance, do the responsible thing and get yourself a quote today. Go to www.financialhealthinsurance.com, uh, fill out the little form and get yourself a quote today. Uh, GoFundMe is not insurance, right? So. Who's got questions for me today, man? How can I help you build your brand? How can I help you explode your brand? How can I help you take your brand 
to the next level? Where are you stuck at? What are some of the things that you need to do? What are some of the things you think you need to have and maybe you don't need to have them? I don't know. Maybe you're still developing a business idea or a business plan and you ask yourself, uh, where do I start? Whatever the question is, give me the, the name of your brand and then go ahead and post your question in the chat uh, and let's get this thing started. And you guys know if we don't have questions, then I recap this week's show starting with yesterday's show, which we did. What you think about money is keeping you broke. What you think about money is keeping you broke. And if, if you have not already shared the show, uh, go ahead and hit the share button as well. Uh, the hearts and the likes and the thumbs up lets Facebook know that we have quality content. And that's the only way that we can compete with the ratchetness on some of these social media platforms is if you engage with the good stuff, right? If you engage with the positive stuff, that's one of the only ways that we can compete with uh, some of the stuff that we see out here, man, that's going viral on our timelines. But we talked about a few different things about what you were taught about money, some of the ways that you think about money. You might not realize that they could be detrimental to your financial success because the you get what you focus on right and sometimes we focus on not having money without even knowing it sometimes we focus on not having money without knowing it we we we, we take pride in the fact that we know how to survive with minimal necessities right we absolutely take pride in knowing how to survive with minimal there's nothing wrong with being resourceful there's nothing wrong with that old african ingenuity man where we could uh i remember uh, as a kid not having a toolbox and, and having to fix my bikes with butter knives and steak knives i mean you gotta remember you know if you had a butter knife then a butter knife was your flathead screwdriver right but you couldn't use a butter knife on phillips screws what did you have to use anybody have to deal with no toolbox what did you use if you didn't have a phillips screwdriver but you had to deal with some phillips screws right right and this is a, a ghetto ingenuity test right it says can i brand a business if i don't have a product yet you absolutely can and you absolutely should this is great rising from uh bnj's barbecue and catering in atlanta georgia uh top of the morning to you bnj uh, uh, you absolutely can and you absolutely should. Anybody got an uh, uh, answer to that quick trivia question? If you if you needed screwdrivers and you didn't have a toolbox, you know that a butter knife was a flathead. What was the Phillips screwdriver when you didn't have a Phillips screwdriver? Or is this just something that I dealt with <laughs> as a kid, right? Trying to fix my bike, trying to fix my tools, trying to get into something, uh, trying to change the batteries in something. Uh, it's got a Phillip head screwdriver, a Phillip head screw. And for those of you who do not know, you're a Phillip screwdriver. Uh, Joy said a fork. I never tried a fork. Your Phillip screwdriver was the steak knife. The steak knife, uh, Monica. It was the, the steak knife. Victoria, Victoria said scissors. Yeah, it was for me, it was the steak knife. So my mom had a set of steak knives with no tip because i broke all the tips of the steak knives trying to get a phillips screwdriver phillips screw out of something <laughs> yeah for us it was a steak knife so a key okay so a key uh, uh scissors i have used scissors before a key scissors uh steak knife uh uh and a fork i never used a fork on a phillips head screwdriver but yeah we didn't have any tips on the steak knives <laughs> because i was always breaking them right uh, so let's let's go back to um, uh, Jennifer's question. She says, "Can I brand a business even though I do not have a product yet? If you already know the industry, if you know the industry that you're in, right? So, for instance, if it is if you're going to be in the health and wellness industry, if you're going to be there in the exercise and fitness industry." You absolutely can brand yourself without a product. If you're going to be in the personal coaching 
uh, 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 a business, if you're going to be in online marketing, if you, it doesn't matter what industry or what industry do you think about? What what do you what are you thinking about doing, Jennifer? What are you thinking about doing? You're saying to yourself, you know what? I know I can do this, right? Or I know I can do that. Uh, I just don't have any products yet, but this is what I'm going to do. And I'll I'll, I'll give you some tips on how to brand uh, brand that. Uh, Logic said infused candy uh, manufacturing CBD infused products, and now FDA uh, fighting back. What's a good way to deal with that type of situation? All right, Logic, I like that. I like that. All right, so let's deal with Jennifer first. Jennifer, let me know what is it that um what do you what do you think you're going what is the industry that you're going to be in because that's all you need to know is the industry you don't have to have a product uh you can start branding yourself in, in a broader industry and then you can niche down but you absolutely should start creating uh you should have the name of of your uh your business uh your tagline uh you can come up with that stuff just based on the industry not necessarily a uh so she says, click kids shoe accessories. So that's enough right now for you to start branding yourself, even though you don't have a product, right? For right now, you can already start branding yourself. You can create your name, you can create the tagline, you can create your uh, Facebook fan page, you can create your uh, all of your other social media uh, uh, outlets, you can create your YouTube channel. And you can start talking to people right now about what it is that you're doing. You, we've all seen those coming soon signs. We've all seen that, right? So that's kind of the mode that you're in. You already have the name. So it, for me, it would be financial health mentor coming soon. All things wealth strategies uh, uh, and, and business uh, uh, advice and consulting, right? Time off now to clock in. But yeah, yeah, you will watch it later uh, to get the response. I appreciate that. But yeah, I would start building everything right now. And then after I got a general brand built, you can always niche down and be more specific about the product that you are uh, building. Uh, but yeah, if you accessories and you know that is for kids, uh, then yeah, start getting in touch with uh, uh, your kid friendly side and your designs and all that kind of stuff. The color schemes, all that stuff can be already locked and loaded and ready to go before you even get your first product. So, logic, I would say, I would say, take full advantage of what the law says right now. Doesn't matter that the FDA is fighting back and want to make some changes in the future, but I would definitely take full advantage of what you're able to do right now. Uh, with the um, infused candies and get that stuff out there like right now and just keep grinding, but also get ahead of the curve, right? So right now you're doing CBD infused products because it's legal. Uh, and right now the FDA is kind of, you, you, you're good to go. I would say already start to think about and develop your next line of products in case this one goes away altogether and this is why i say building the brand is so important so what is the name of the brand logic see once you got the brand established products are interchangeable and i, I don't think there's a greater example of that than mcdonald's McDonald's will take and put things in and out of their menu all the time. Some things stick, some things don't. Some things they can't continue to produce long term, like the McRib. They bring that McRib back for four or five weeks and they make a killing, uh, but they also make a mess. So they leave it out, right? So they leave it out. So, so you think about if the brand is infused candy, then what other things can you infuse candy with? So maybe you go to alcohol infused candies and you add that as a line of products, right? Maybe you go with some nutrition infused candies and you add that 
as a line of product. So if the CBD infused because of the FDA's decision goes away completely, people just come to love infused candies because of your creative power and the things that you do, right? So yeah, so if the new one you're making is CBD, uh, just keep the brand strong. So if it goes away, the brand is still strong. They still know you for uh, getting other infused uh, candies out there. Uh, so that would be that would be my thought process on that. Keep the brand strong. What does infused candy mean? How creative can you be with other types of infused candy? You should have a smorgasbord of infused candies. And if the CBD candy goes away, you make it hit as long as it can hit. But if it goes away, people are still coming to you for other infused candies. So, yeah, I like that. I like that. See, I'm trying to stay uh, in the health aspect of using uh, CBD. Yeah, I mean, that makes a whole lot of sense. It absolutely makes a whole lot of sense uh, because uh, we know that CBD um, has a lot of health uh, benefits. In fact, we know if you, if you trace the history of marijuana, you know that marijuana was almost in every medicine, uh, same as cocaine was uh, 100 years ago. Uh, there are a lot of the uses, uh, uh, medical uses of marijuana back in the day, uh, but they made it illegal, um, you know. But, yeah, I, I, I would say, um, you know, do it as long as the as long as you can do it without getting in, into any trouble. Uh, but also make sure that you have uh, other lines, other things that you sell to go along with the brand right with the brand well we know that it is still illegal in a lot of comp a lot of cases uh but they are allowing this the cbd uh they don't allow the thc infusing in a lot of stuff but you know uh and some of those uh uh states like colorado it is it is fully legal um uh for medicinal purposes of course and then even some uh, recreational for uh purposes in some of the states as well but yeah i, I would say uh keep the brand and build out the brand so people know that you have other types of infused candies and then just run with the uh, CBD infused for as long as you can. Um, you know, I would have a game plan that says, hey, if if we're able to keep this long term, here's how I'm going to explode it. If uh, it goes away, then here is how it just literally disappears from my menu. But my brand is strong enough and I keep it going. Right. This vape portal is the name of the other side of uh, products. Good, good. E-cigarettes. Got you. Got you. Okay. So yeah, I, I would I would keep the the brand, start building that brand, man, so they know what uh infused candy is all about. Right? People gotta know what infused candy is and what what to expect. Whether uh products change or not, they should know you for a good quality maybe creativity and offer some things that people, um, you know, they can't find anywhere else. Asking you, asking how you would address online sales. Uh, really, online sales, it, it, it all comes down to, Victoria, trying to make money online, all comes down to branding and marketing. A, you got to first know your target market, right? Uh, or I would say even before you know your target market, you pick a niche. One thing that a lot of people make uh, mistakes with when they're trying to make money online is they're trying to sell every type of product they can get their hands on. They're trying to, to, they're trying to sell every type of product that they can get their hands on. And I think the best way to make money online is to niche down uh, 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 initially. So instead of trying to sell every type of product, maybe you have one product and, and a product that goes along with that product. I, I, I coached with a young lady um, a couple of days ago uh, and she was, you know, had a bunch of different products. And I said, it's fine to have a bunch of different products in your store. Uh, she does uh, Shopify. It's, it's fine to have a bunch of different products in your Shopify store, but your branding and marketing efforts should be going to push one product and make your store known for this one product and then because your store is known for this one product it's also known for the products that are related to that product 
and that's how I will be pushing uh, products on the internet. I will pick a niche. I will pick one or two hot products in that niche, and then I will pick the top two or three related products to go along with that niche, right? And it could be as simple as, um, let, let's see, uh, a product. So, um, so I, I've got this dry erase marker right here. So what if my product was dry erase markers, right? So I would be really, I would find all the terms that relate to dry erase markers. And I would be trying to rank for those keywords, right? SEO, I would be, all of my content would be put out for those keywords. Now, because I sell dry erase markers, then obviously I want to have a dry eraser, right? And then another related product would be the dry erase boards. I have a board behind here uh, that I use for, for my presentations. So that would probably be my top three of products or the other product that I would have. I don't have it on my desk. But the other product I would have is that solution that you spray to help keep the dry erase boards clean. So while you can come to my store and probably get some pens and some notepads and all that stuff, I'm not marketing none of that stuff. That's just if you follow my site and you need to get some stuff while you're there, it's there. But all of my marketing efforts is one particular line of products, dry erase markers dry erase erasers, dry erase boards, and dry erase board cleaning solution. That's how niched you should be and get used to driving traffic to that one area. Uh, and then once you get really good at that, then you can wash, rinse, and repeat and do the same thing for another line of products uh, and really have a campaign for that other line of products. Think about McDonald's again. McDonald's has its Big Mac campaign. And when you see the Big Mac campaign, all you see is Big Mac. You don't see that it comes with fries and a drink. You just see Big Mac. And what's so great about the Big Mac? Because that's that's the campaign. So we got to learn how to niche down and really just brand and market one particular thing. And I think that's the best way to make the most money online. Uh, even if you have a variety store, kind of like a dollar store uh, online, um, you know, a five a dime, a uh, five below type store, you sell a bunch of different stuff. You actually need just multiple marketing campaigns to drive traffic to those particular products instead of just driving traffic to your store in general and saying, hey, I got a bunch of stuff in my store that you're going to like. Go to my website. Now, you have to create individual campaigns for the hottest products that you sell, and maybe not the hottest product, but maybe the products with the biggest profit margin that you sell so you can get the most bang for your buck and you really drive traffic to those one or two uh, things. It says, need an investor uh, trucking industry. Need an investor uh, because you're in the trucking industry. Um, I would say it's it's the same thing, man. <laughs> it's, see. It's, See, we don't get that all things come down to branding and marketing. So what are you doing right now, uh, uh, Elobo, uh, to find investors? Where can I go right now to find, uh, uh, um, to find out about what you got going on, what you need, and how I'm going to get a return on that investment? What do you have right now? Do you have a website that you can point me to? If I, if there's a bunch of people on this stream right now, uh, El Lobo, and you needed investors, can you send us somewhere right now where we can see a short video, maybe uh, download uh, some information about your project that you need investors for, right? How can, how, how can you make it easy for people to know about your product and learn about you quickly so we can decide whether we even want to take a meeting with you to invest. Does that make sense? Let me give you my quote of the day for today. Today's quote of the day. 
The noblest charity is to prevent a man from accepting charity. And the best alms is to show and enable a man to dispense with alms. Right. So it kind of goes back to that thing is the best way to help the poor is not be one of them. This, this is what it's basically saying. The noblest charity is to prevent a man from accepting charity. And the best alms is to show and enable a man to dispense with alms. See, what we want to do is position uh, ourselves to not need charity, but also have overflow in our lives to be able to give charity. And that's a uh, tall, uh, Talmudic philosopher. So there's no person's name, but a Talmudic philosopher came up with that. The noblest charity is to prevent a man from accepting charity. And the best alms is to show and enable a man to dispense with alms. And that's my whole goal. My whole game plan, man, is to help people build their wealth to where they can take care of their personal financial success first. And then their cup run it over so they can help other people do the same thing, man. The same thing. So I would say uh, today's uh, uh, quote of the day is brought to you by Monetize My Life Academy. Guys, if you want a complete and comprehensive branding and marketing package, maybe you don't want uh, a monthly subscription. Well, I got you covered, man. Uh, if you click on the link in the description above or below this video, wherever the link shows up at, uh, I have a 10 course, nine ebook branding and marketing, online marketing video and ebook library that you can grab for $47. What does it include? It includes my brand building basics. Two hours of me teaching you how to set up your brand, how to come up with your brand name, your tagline, how to identify your target market, all of that stuff. You get my how to build a Weebly website two part video series. You get my uh, video marketing series on how I teach you how I use videos to create systems that market for me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You get my uh, course on how to win with Facebook ads. You get a SEO course. You get a, um, a lead magnet course, how to build lead magnet. 10 courses, nine ebooks, plus one free 30 minute consultation with yours truly for $47. So click on the link in the description and go ahead and grab that thing, man. I want to help you win. Uh, that's for those who do not want a monthly subscription to Monetize My Life Academy, which is $40 a month. Uh, but if you just want to pay a one time fee and get a bunch of stuff to get your brand out of the gates and get you off to a good start, it's the best way to do it, man. I really that's about uh, eight, nine hundred, maybe a thousand dollars worth of video material, ebooks uh, for forty seven dollars. And the reason I did it that way, man, because when I got started, I had a lot of people who helped me. A lot of people gave me some uh some 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 really good discounts on getting myself started yes 47 dollars uh is what that costs uh and you own it you go to uh it's in the google drive and you just basically get uh, everything you need i says what is that called it is called uh my online marketers uh ebook and video library online marketers ebook and video library it literally if you're if you're trying to build your brand, it literally gives you everything that you need to build a brand, especially if you're building the brand online. The video courses that I do will teach you how to build a brand just in general. But then I follow up with the SEO courses, the email marketing courses, the social media marketing courses, um, uh, the lead magnet courses, the lead generation courses. So you really get everything that you need for 50 bucks, man, 47 bucks. So you can't beat that. So uh, just click on the link in the description below or above. It's actually bit.ly bit forward slash MMLA ebook and video. Kind of long to say, hard to remember. Just click on the link in the description uh, above or inbox me and I will just shoot you that link uh, as well. So what else do we have? It says, how important is uh, your writing business plan? And can you LLC a Facebook podcast uh, kind of like the same thing you are doing now? 
really, really good stuff, uh, uh, Rashad. I would say, and this is going to sound funny, I would say it's critical to, to write a business plan. Now, the reason it sounds funny is because I have not written a business plan for any of my businesses. Now, I know that I struggle in certain areas in some of my businesses because I don't have that business plan. But what I didn't want to do is not start my business because I didn't have the business plan. And I'm the type of person that would have said, OK, if I got to start a business plan, all right, I'm going to start it. I'm going to procrastinate. I'm doing the business plan. And that would have kept me from starting my business. But you, I think it's critical. And that's the goal for me. 2018 is to LLC all of my businesses and get a solid business plan in place for all of my businesses as well. Can you LLC a Facebook podcast? Yes. What this is, what I'm doing right now falls under my Thornton Media Group company because a podcast is media. So I don't know if you call it a podcast, but uh, any show that I produce, and you guys know that I've got a show coming up with my wife uh, called Hustle and Love here uh, next month. Uh, I'm going to say next month. No, in three weeks, we'll be launching that show. Uh, but that is a show, and the rights of that show is owned by Thornton Media Group. The rights of talking money in the morning uh, um, live is owned by Thornton Media Group. So you can create a media group that owns the podcast, right? And I think that's a good, good way to do it. Now, because you're doing so, even if I didn't have financial health mentor and I just had the media group, right, that owns my podcast, I can still use that as a home based business. And write off my lifestyle for using my laptop, my computer, my cell phone, but my electricity, all of that stuff still creates the same write offs because I have a legitimate home based business. Chances are, Rashawn, you're going to record your podcast in your home, right? So now that just became a home based business for you, and you can tap into the home based business tax laws to uh, minimize your taxes, save some money, get yourself out of debt, uh, and then free up the money that you need to really start investing in that media group to grow it. Uh, maybe you're not the only podcast that you own the rights to. Maybe you uh, uh, encourage some other people to get into podcasting and you own the rights to their shows or you co-own the rights to their shows. You co-executive produce their shows. Right. That makes sense. So you absolutely I would write a business plan, but I would not let the writing of the business plan stop me from getting and doing the business. Right. A lot of people will, because they haven't written a plan, won't do a business. No, I do the business and then I come back and write the business plan. Don't let that stop you. And then, yes, I would absolutely form an LLC for a media company that produces your podcast. It's my thoughts on that. Uh, Fram, uh, rise and shine, get people. Uh, what is that call, sir? Okay, I think I answered that. The uh, uh, Monetize My Life Academy uh, Online Marketers ebook and video library. Uh, okay, so LLC, the media company, then create the online podcast. Yeah, that's the way I would do it. And then the online podcast would be owned by and produced by the media company, right? Uh, and then it's, yeah, you can enter into an agreement with anybody else if you want to produce other people's podcasts and stuff like that. Uh, then that media group can own uh, because I, I want you guys to get how powerful this is. Right. You guys probably don't pay attention, but this is episode three hundred and forty six for me. Now. Is it a great big television production in a live studio on a sound stage? No. But it is digital content, intellectual property that I own. <coughs> it's intellectual property that I own. I take the audio from this, then I put it on Blog Talk Radio, which feeds it out to Stitcher and iTunes. So it is out there as a podcast, which is a copywritten podcast owned by Thornton Media Group. Now, here's what's significant. 
on my way to building my billion dollar empire a lot of people saying that cortez man that's that's cool you do a little show you motivate a few people uh you get you know 16 viewers 40 viewers or whatever every day uh and that's cool uh but how long can you keep doing that and how does that how do you monetize it how does that become valuable when i become a multi multi-millionaire on my way to a billionaire do you think these episodes will then have a little bit more value if i become a billionaire right and i'm saying if for you guys but really i should be saying when i become a billionaire when i become a billionaire do you think it would be cool to be able to go back to 2017 2016 2018 when i'm almost on every episode told y'all i was going to be a billionaire you think people would want to come back and listen to what i had to say before i built my billionaire empire once i become a billionaire you think that to become a billionaire i have say 500 episodes say i finish up at episode 500 say i have 500 episodes and 10 years from now i'm a billionaire you think i can pull a walt disney and have somebody go back and create a best of talking money in the morning with billionaire h cortez financial health mentor see see a lot of us can only see right now so you see hey i'm just doing this little show it ain't making me no money it ain't really no nah, man no nah. i made a decision to do this show and that's why i try to continue to make it better and better because eventually show makes me a few dollars right now i have a few people sponsor uh different segments and stuff like that but eventually I'm going to be able to take these very same episodes, these very same audio clips, the all of this stuff, man. I'm eventually going to be able to package and distribute it worldwide when I become a worldwide uh, uh, entrepreneurial sensation based on all of the other endeavors that I create. You, you guys get you, you following where I'm going. So some of you guys won't start a po podcast because you think you can't see right now how you can make money from it. I'm not worried about making money from it right now. I, I just want to uh, continue to do this and make these predictions and take people along the ride with me today so that in the future, when I'm addressed as billionaire entrepreneur, H. Cortez, it's like, dude told us he was on his way to a billionaire 10 years ago. Let me go back and listen to his mindset, how he was thinking, what he was talking about. Dude told me he was going to rebuild the black community 10 years ago. Right. So you got to, got to, got to, got to, got to go ahead and get some things started. And intellectual property is one of the few things that we understand how to own and how to profit from. This is my intellectual property. Right. I own copyrights to this forever and be able to pass this down to my children forever. <clears throat> Case in point. Think and grow rich. Right. The Napoleon Hill Foundation now owns all the copyrights to all of his books. Right. All of the audios of him reading his books, doing his lectures and stuff like that. They make tons of money from the copyrights of that stuff, y'all. Intellectual property, right? Since so today we do what we have to, so tomorrow we can do what we want to. Absolutely, Ronald. Absolutely. So don't, don't lose sight of <clears throat> taking something that is very small, you know, uh, 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 end of this year, I will have mixtapes out with a lot of these audios over music, right? A lot of these speeches and, and these clips, I put them over music, and now that becomes another digital product, another intellectual product, right? So uh, I, I, I'm saying, don't limit yourself to thinking that <clears throat> you can't create some products that 
last last example on this. Last example on this. How many of you guys are familiar with Dave Chappelle? How many guys are how many of you are familiar with Dave Chappelle and his latest deal with uh, Netflix? Sixty million dollars. Sixty million dollars. Netflix gave Dave Chappelle for um, I think it ended up being four specials, but originally it was three. <clears throat> What you guys may not know is Dave Chappelle already had the first two specials already recorded. He already had the first two specials already recorded. So when they came to him and said, hey, man, we want to give you a deal for X amount of specials. He's like, all right. He said he literally went and got the two off the shelf, dusted them off. Here's the first two right here. Right? <laughs> Here's the first two right here. So when you understand the power in creating digital media and using intellectual property as and, and creating uh, um, copyrighted material, I already know where I'm going 10 years from now. And everything that I'm touching right now, it may not be valuable right now. Right. These two books right here, self-published, right? I don't sell a lot of these books right now, but five years from now, when I'm doing a, a public speaking on stage in front of tens of thousands of people, and I'm saying, hey, go to the back of the room and grab your copy of Financial Health Traffic Report and Monetize My Life. But if I did, if I was only thinking about the money I can make off of it right now, I might not have written these books. But I know where I'm going. So the more I increase my P, uh, my PVL, my personal value level, the more the products and the content that I have previously created becomes valuable. The more valuable I become as the brand, the bigger the brand gets, the, I add value to these every single day. Every single day I do a live stream and episode, I add value to the ones that I've done previously. So eventually, all of this stuff becomes valuable and who owns it? See, I didn't wait for somebody to come give me a book deal to write a book. I may not have never written one. I didn't wait till I got famous to write a book so somebody give me a book deal. No, I wrote a couple books. I'm going to become famous and then I'm going to make those books famous. And guess who owns all the rights? Me. That's who. Me. That's who. This episode right here, because I, I, I'm telling you what I'm going to do, this episode right here, it becomes value. It just became more valuable because I made a prediction on February 2nd, 2018, that I'm going to be able to sell tens of thousands of these books every year based on my vision and where I'm going with my brand. Just made this episode more valuable. Uh, so uh, what's better? A Facebook podcast or YouTube podcast, which one is more profitable in your opinion? Uh, again, I do both. I'm streaming to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. I'm streaming to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. I think Facebook has the ability for you to... Uh, I think Facebook has the ability for you to build your audience a lot faster than YouTube and, and building the audience. That kind of what determines how you can monetize the podcast and the blog. But I also think uh, with YouTube, depending on the type of blog, um, there are two different platforms. So on YouTube, you're the hunted. That means people are looking for what you have. On Facebook, you're the hunter. You're creating content that you you're hunting people down on Facebook with this type of content. Facebook search sucks. You can't really do searches on Facebook for 
uh, not in a very comprehensive way, the same way that you did. Facebook is not a search engine like YouTube is, right? When you want to find something out, you don't, when you want to learn about something, you don't go and say, let me go Facebook and let me search and see if I can find this, right? If somebody want to learn how to build wealth for the black community, they don't go on Facebook and say, let me search and, and then they find me. They go on YouTube and say, uh, black economic empowerment is the search and then some of my stuff will pop up because that's how I label myself as black economic empowerment on YouTube, right? So they both have their place. I would say, uh, I think the what I'm doing is a probably a good model. Uh, I can use Facebook, I can use YouTube, then I strip the audio from YouTube and then I upload it to iTunes and Stitcher so it becomes a podcast, right? Blog Talk Radio is another uh, a good place. Uh, SoundCloud. Uh, those places that you can upload audios and create podcasts for yourself, right? Uh, Facebook, uh, I used to be able to strip all of my videos off Facebook, uh, but they, they made some changes. So I have to come up with another solution because one thing that you have to be careful of is if I don't find a way to go back and pull all of that content from Facebook, that means I'm, I lost that content forever. People can find it and I can direct people to that, but I always wanna be able to grab everything that I do, own it, put it on a terabyte somewhere, and I own not only the rights to it, but I actually own the video. Right now, this one that I'm streaming on Facebook, you guys are watching on Facebook, Facebook owns this. <laughs> I own the right, but they actually own the actual video, which is being recorded and stored and housed on their platform. This is why I do Facebook and YouTube, because I can go and grab the video off YouTube and I save it in my uh, in my own database so that I have all of my shows saved. Right. But intellectual property game, man, that's why I, I, it baffles me that um in 2018 uh, uh r&b artists and rappers and stuff like that are, are still trying to get signed to deals and give all of their ownership and their rights away i'm like man you don't understand the intellectual property game by now i was watching a movie uh the other day we was watching um uh, black lightning black lightning uh somebody turned me on to that series so i was checking out a couple episodes and in that black lightning film uh, uh tv series there's a lot of old school music and you know who owns the publishing for a lot of old school old school music not us even though they can put that old school music as the underlying soundtrack for a TV show that serves black people, that is targeted to black people, we don't get the royalties from that music because the publishing is owned by the big studios. That's why you always hear the same old music across all the platforms because they understand that yeah you can make a black movie but we recommend that since we're shooting this in our studio we recommend this music uh here's the music you can select from to create the soundtrack you're like well i got some original music we don't care nothing about your original music we want you to use this music in this catalog why because i own publishing to it so when you make it public again i continue to feed my family we don't understand that digital and uh, intellectual property is powerful, right? Why do uh, the cer certain movies keep getting remade over and over? Why do certain songs keep getting remade over and over? Because the big studios own the publishing. They own the royalties. To, to They bought the rights to the songs, even though Lionel Richie might have written it, even though Smokey Robinson might have written it. We own the rights. So when it gets remade into a country hit, when it gets remade into a pop hit, we get paid all over again. We don't care nothing about your original stuff. We want to keep, uh, keep duplicating and mass producing the stuff that we own and have the rights to. That's the part that we're missing from the ownership game. That's why I'm building a media company.
right? We, we miss that part uh, and how we can continue to make money long term of making something of good quality one time, right? Who knows? 20 years from now, one of my sons might be doing talking money in the morning, next generation, right? And I license them the name and I make money from it all over. You just never know, man. You just got to, we, we, we ain't thinking, man. We ain't thinking. And that's what I like to encourage people to do is to think. And that's why I throw all these ideas out there. A lot of people say, Cortez, you're giving up the game, bro. You're giving up too much for free. No, nah, man, I ain't giving up the game. It's sowing seeds so that I, I re reap a harvest in the future. Right. I want all of y'all to go out and do a show, even if you can only stick with it for six months. Who knows? Down the road, you might blow up in, in another endeavor. And now those shows just became. More powerful, this is all wealth is in ownership of the copyrights. Yeah. All wealth is in ownership, period, of everything, not just the copyrights, the means of production. It's just ownership, man. It's just ownership. Mark my words, man. Next 10 years, I will have a media company that rivals some of the biggest media companies on the planet. 10 years. I have a media company, TV networks, cable networks that rival some of the biggest media companies on this planet. Because I know how the game is played and now I'm learning how to play the game to dominate. And with the ability to go to direct to small screen, cell phone, laptops, tablets. That's where the game is going, man. You guys are starting to see now all these little viral videos on the small screen. And as soon as you get 20 seconds into the video, it cuts to a commercial. Yeah, we have the ability to create followings to that level and transition. I'll give you my last example and then we'll get out of here. Monique. Monique going through whatever she's gone through with Netflix and them not offering her what she thought was a good deal of money or them requesting that she audition before they give her the money. Uh, that she thinks she deserves, right? Why has that Monique taken a page out of Kevin Hart's book? The last three comedy specials Kevin Hart put out, he paid for and produced out of his own pocket, owns all the rights, owns everything. And not only will they be wildly successful and pay for his family for years to come, as other companies want to reproduce them and put them out over and over again, and he can license that stuff out. But each one of them did over a hundred million dollars worldwide. Laugh at my pain. He said, man, it cost me five, uh, five million dollars to do that. He said, laugh at my pain. It cost me five million dollars to do. First month made a hundred million. Then turn around uh, three months later, made another hundred million off the DVD sales. And he owns it. So 20 years from now. When a company wants to come along and say, hey, Kev, uh, you had a wonderful career, man. We'd like to put together the best of Kevin Hart, uh, uh, a monthly subscription uh, service. Where, where people can pay $20 a month and we'll send them some of your best comedy bits uh, on DVD or digital download every month. And he might say, all right, I'll sell you the license to that for 100 million. And you can you can run that for 10 years. And the company says bet, because we know that we can create a subscriber base of 10 million fans at 20 dollars per month so we'll buy that deal we'll take that licensing and now his family just got paid all over again without having to give up the rights of ownership to the original content right all these best of uh slow jams of the 60s 70s and 80s we don't own the rights to that music 
So those big publishing houses and those big studios, they're getting paid off that content over and over and over again. We can do the exact same thing. So the three principles of wealth, what you own, control, and pass down to your children. Man, you said it, Rashawn. So that's it for today's uh, show, man. I appreciate you guys for tuning in, rocking with me, hearing me rant, hearing me cast my vision a little bit, man. Hopefully you got a vision. Hopefully you see yourself in the future doing something great that's going to validate the moves that you're making today. You may have heard me say it on this show, man. When we talked about um, vision and we talked about people going to the next level, it says one of one of the, the things that cause people to fail is their lack of the ability to make a decision. Successful people make decisions quickly. And it takes them a long time to change their mind. Unsuccessful people take forever to make a decision and then they change their mind quickly. They take forever to make a decision and then they change their mind quickly. Another way I like to say it is this. I'm the type of person that will make a decision and then make that decision the right decision. See, sometimes you just have to decide to do something and then back that decision up with the actions to make it right. It could have started out as a wrong decision and not the best decision. It's like, ah, that's all right. I, I'll give you an example. Last, last, last one. I'll get out of here. I made the decision to walk away from my job. Wasn't the best decision, but I had to get my full time entrepreneurship on. man. I had to just it, I, it was just something I had to do. Now, I wasn't in the best position financially to walk away from my job. But what I did was I, I wasn't going to waver and waffle and go. Uh, it wasn't going to take me 10 years to make the decision. I made the decision. And then inside of 12 months, I made the decision right with the actions that followed the decision. That makes sense. Don't be afraid to make a decision. Um, should I contract a uh, contact a lawyer for learning how to copyright my content? Uh, it depends on the type of content, uh, Henry. So for me, I don't have to copyright this content because it's being copywritten as it's being produced. You, you guys get it? See, a lot of people think that I have to do when everything is timestamped. What the copyright says is. Can you prove that you are the manufacturer and the creator of this content? And if someone else has a claim to this content, does your proof supersede their proof? Somebody can say, "Man, I came up with talking money, talking uh, came up with talking money in the morning live uh, last June." And, and, and they've been using it and, and they've been trying to copy what I'm doing, right? Or doing something similar. Well, I can go to the original time that I released that name, that statement. Everything is time stamped. And it says, no, this brother started talking money in the morning live in July of 2016. So clearly he made this public first. So it depends on the type of content, right? It depends on if you got some stuff that you're working on in the background, uh, uh, Henry, that you're not going to release for another six months. You might want to get that copywritten because someone could rightfully, by happenstance, be working on something similar right now. And they could release something of the same name before you, right? But if you got already got stuff out there, you, you don't have to do it that way. You can add it, add some added protection if you do it that way. But when it comes to digital content, anything that's produced digitally is automatically time stamped. Uh, and all you have to do is make sure that you hold on to the originals. Uh, and that's a, a poor man's way of copywriting. And then if at one point you wanted to group all that stuff together and send it off to the copyright offices locally on the state level and the federal level, you absolutely could. But uh, can't, no one can go into a courtroom and say that I infringed on their copyright for talking money in the morning live unless they can prove 
that they made this public uh, at some point before I did. All right? Cool. All right, guys. So I'm your man, H. Cortez. This is what about trademarks? Same thing, Kimberly. Now, trademarks is a little different. Trademarks are a little different because if you're using uh, uh, um, if you're, for for instance, shirt designs and things of that nature, uh, if I really wanted to own that, I would go to go to go to trademarks, right? If there's something uniquely created that I don't want someone to copy, and I'm going to put it out there. So, for instance, this is a unique design. I am hustle is my design. You notice there's no TM on it. There's no trademark on it. Right. I don't have a trademark on it because I have the original design that was created. When I created it, I have the original design. Uh, I have the timestamp of the person who created it for me and I purchased the rights to, from. It. So I have all of that. Right. So I own that and I, I'm, I feel I'm pretty safe. But again, if this was something that I wasn't going to put out for another year, and uh, I was keeping it under wraps and I was going to launch a whole line and I had thousands of dollars tied up into it before the launch. I would absolutely have trademarked it because I don't want someone else to come up with anything remotely close by happenstance. But because I've already, I'm the type of person that I come up with my stuff and I put it out there immediately and I save the original. So I have the timestamps and dates of when I did stuff. So, so in order for someone to take this design, They'd have to be able to prove in a court of law that they produced this very same design before I did. And that's most people don't do that. Right. And if someone was trying to steal this design, they know they 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 wouldn't have that. They, they, they know they wouldn't have a leg to stand on in court because they don't even know when I originally created the design. Right. They don't know that this design was created two years ago. They saw the shirt last year, but I had the design created two years ago. So I own the original uh, creation of the design and it's time stamped from when it was originally created. Right. So that's, you know, but but again, if I was if I was sinking a bunch of money into something like my next project, my 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 full fledged clothing brand. Uh, that design and that stuff will be trademarked before it ever hits the streets. Before it ever hits the streets, right? Because people change uh, designs, uh, font, graphics, and uh, and can be used. A lot of times they can. A, a lot of, because then it becomes something totally original. Now, if it's too close to what mine looks like, then I can challenge them uh, and issue a, a cease and desist. Right. They have to make it look very unique. It can't even look remotely close to mine uh, without me being able to challenge. And then if, you know, they say, hey, it does look unique. It is different. Um, and then maybe so. So a good example of that would be what if somebody has something close to this with a different font? Right. And then. Uh, I challenge them and they say, you know what? No, I created my design. You know, before I ever, ever saw your design, then we can go to court and say, OK, uh, uh, Mr. Judge, uh, here's where mine was created. I think this person saw mine and then created theirs. And then they might say, well, no, mine was created before yours. So the same could be said about you. And then we have to prove, well, has court was there ever a way that I could have seen yours and created mine or or and, and so. There's a lot of dynamics to that thing, uh, but absolutely talk to a, a trademark, uh, a patent attorney, copyright attorney. Uh, that's not my field of expertise, but from the little study that I've, I've done, for the most part, man, nobody's really out to steal your designs and, and, and steal your, your copyright for the most part, right? Um, you're, you're safe. But if you want that added protection and you can afford it, it's not cheap to trademark something. If you can afford it, then, you know, that's a decision that you can make uh, and you can cross that bridge if you feel that you need to. Cool. All right. So we've gone a little bit longer 
than normal. But I appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. I appreciate the engagement. I always like the engaging type shows, man. I love that you guys comment and follow along in the stream. So um, that's it. Keep in mind that Hustle and Love drops on uh, Friday, February the 16th. Uh, KOVLradio.com is where you're going to hear my better half, my motivation, my reason for uh, all things that I do is to make sure that that little lady stays happy. And you're going to see how we make it all work uh, as a couple, um, you know, how she supports me, how we hold it down with the family, everything, man. So I think that's going to be super cool for you guys to, to, to tune into. It's actually going to be a radio show. But we're also going to give you a lot of behind the scenes video uh, and that kind of stuff. So it's going to be more like a reality show based around the radio show. So I think that's going to be super cool for you guys to uh, check out and tune into. Uh, but I'm your man, H. Cortez, the one and only financial health mentor to the black community. Everybody's favorite fatherpreneur. So I'll talk to you next time once you get your money up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve it each and every one of you. Peace out, y'all.